Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and 1st edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Black Red Vampire deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And while we don't have a ton of payoff cards for the Vampire Tribe in Standard at the moment, we have been promised more Vampires in Crimson Vow, so we've got that to look forward to. But for now we can add a few burn spells and still make the deck function, as one of our main payoffs is Florian, Voldaren Sion, a 3-mana 3 3-3 3 legendary Vampire Noble with First Strike, saying at the beginning of our post-combat main phase, we can look at the top X cards of our library, where X is the total amount of life lost by our opponents this turn, then we can exile one of those cards and play it this turn, so we can even play lands with Florian's ability, and of course synergizes very nicely with any burn spells or direct damage, as that's a way to enable Florian's ability without having to put our creatures in harm's way. Then at 2 mana we've got Vampire Socialite, a 2-2 with Menace, saying when it enters a battlefield, if an opponent lost life this turn, we can put a plus one plus one counter on each other vampire we control, and vampires entering the battlefield as we control Socialite will also get a plus one plus one counter as long as the opponent lost life this turn. Then we've got the Falconrath Pitfighter, a 1 mana 2 1, so can apply some early pressure, and then also has an activated ability for 2 mana that lets us discard a card and sacrifice a vampire to draw 2 cards, and can only activate this if our opponent lost life this turn. So, not a particularly powerful ability, but it is quite synergistic with our Hungry for More, a 2 mana sorcery, creating a 3 1 black and red vampire creature token with Trample, Lifelink, and Haste, but we have to sacrifice it at the beginning of our next end step. So, after getting an attack in for 3, we can still maybe sacrifice it to the Pit Fighter to get some extra value, and then we can also flash it back out of the graveyard for 3 mana. And then you've heard me mention a few times that our creatures need to deal damage to the opponent before their abilities start to become relevant, which is why we're also playing the full playset of Thermo Alchemist as kind of an honorary vampire in this deck. A 2 mana 03 Defender can tap it to deal 1 damage to each opponent, so by itself it's a great way to enable all our vampire synergies, and then whenever we cast an instant or sorcery we can untap the Alchemist, so we can deal additional damage which complements our burn plan nicely. And then our final vampire is a Bloodthirsty Adversary, a 2-2 with haste. As it enters a battlefield we can pay 2 and a red any number of times, and then it enters with that many plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and we get to exile that many instants or sorceries from our graveyard with mana value 3 or less. We get to exile them, copy them, and cast the copies without paying their mana costs. So at 5 mana we get a 3-3 with haste, that can cast one of our burn spells out of our graveyard for free, so potentially a pretty nice curve topper. And then looking at our burn spells, we've got the full play set of Play with Fire, dealing 2 damage to any target, and if a player is dealt damage we also get to scry 1. Now if we're playing in best of 1 we could also potentially play Shock at 1 mana, as it is in one of the starter decks, hence legal in best of 1 but not best of 3, but for now we're not even playing Shock. Instead at 2 mana we've got a Royal Eruption, dealing 3 damage to any target at sorcery speed, can also kick it for 5 additional mana, in which case it deals 5 damage total. Then we already mentioned our Hungry for more, great way to untap our Alchemist as well. And then Shatter Skull Smashing can be played as a land or as a sorcery dealing X damage divided as we choose among multiple targets. And then if X is 6 or more we potentially double that damage as well. And then last but not least, Igneous Inspiration, dealing 3 damage to any target at sorcery speed. And it also lets us learn one of our sideboard lessons. We've got 7 sideboard cards we can grab in best of one, including Environmental Sciences, which can find a land. Just another cheap way to untap our Thermal Alchemist as well. Necrotic Fumes as removal, potential combo with Hungry for more tokens as well. Two copies of Start from Scratch as a way to deal one damage to any target, so it can be an extra burn spell. Can also destroy artifacts, can be relevant against a Seacast Chariot for instance. Then we've got Expanded Anatomy, giving a creature two plus one plus one counters. Can be nice with Florian's first strike as well. And then a Mascot Exhibition as a nice curve topper, making three different creature tokens. And Confront a Past can take out opposing Planeswalkers. And then our mana base also includes four copies of Den of the Bugbear as an extra mana sink that can turn into a creature. Then we've got all eight dual lands in the black-red colors, as well as four basic mountains and six basic swamps. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. 
probably just play this tapped and maybe hang on to smashing in case we draw more lands. Although I could also play this tapped and then have access to turn 3, Ridge, and I don't have to cost myself 3 life in case we're up against an aggressive deck. Because with double inspiration I do have a lot of ways to spend my mana, so I can probably use the extra land. Put on black whites. Want to get in with our creatures while we can. Alright, hungry for more. Could be good too. A couple ways we could approach this. I think I'm just playing another adversary. One of them might get killed. And then we still get in for two. And then we could use our burn spells as removal to clear a path for the adversary. That seems fine. Alright, Righteous Valkyrie. A little bit difficult to kill with three damage. So probably just going to attack. See if they block. They do. And then I think to be mana efficient, I still inspiration. And then might want to get sciences first, and then the next inspiration can get something else. So not a pretty two for one, but can't have Valkyrie stick around. So your opponent maybe on a black white angel deck or a life gain deck of some sort. Gonna be a tough matchup for a burn deck. Alright, I can hungry for more plus flash it back. A nice 6 damage swing. And we gain 6, so technically a 12 damage swing. Got 6 points of burn in hand, plus a den of the bugbear we can activate. But a rampage of the Valkyries. Gonna try to stem the bleeding. Well, this is where we start burning our opponent out and try to ignore their creatures. So I could go for Sciences plus Inspiration their face and work up towards a kicked Royal Eruption, maybe. And then Inspiration can learn for... Opponent is at 7. Didn't think it starts from scratch, might just be Mascot Exhibition. That's kind of a distraction here. While we try to burn them out. Another Rampage. So, trying to kill their creatures with any sort of my own creatures in place is going to be pretty rough. Thermal Alchemists, unlikely to stick around, I would say. So I'm not sure how relevant playing Mascot Exhibition is going to be. But I guess I'll still go with the Alchemists, and then... Not even sure if I should play the Smashing as a land or hold it. I will eventually need 7 mana to kick Royal Eruption, which I could do right now, put him to 2. But, um... Uh, Given that our opponent's not gaining a life at the moment, I guess it's fine to play Alchemist and then hold the Smashing in case we're gonna end up using it as a Sorcery instead. At 24 I think I can afford to. And hopefully Alchemist survives, because that one or two extra points of damage could make all the difference. Three cards in hand. A Myrios call making two angels. Alright, so I think we got there. Alchemists into kicked royal eruption. Untap alchemists. And there we go. Adversary for five also would have been effective, but I'll take the alchemist win onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. 
Turn to Socialite. Sunset Florian. The sequencing can be a little awkward in this vampire deck since you often want to play cards in your first main phase. For instance, Florian to get the ability going, but then you would miss out on the Socialite's plus one counter. So that's why the Thermal Alchemist is so important. Opponent with a Jory Disruption, so Blue Rat probably playing the Dragon's deck. And uh, yeah, in this case, since we have already played our land, better to play Florian's second main. Could still die to a Dragon's Fire if our opponent has a 4 power Dragon in hand. Otherwise, relatively safe. All right, adversary. So, a lot of options here. I think I'm liking hungry for more attack. See what we hit with Florian, hopefully a two drop. That we still get to play, if not maybe a land. Also plays around another Jory Disruption. Alright, they've got a Demon Bolt, which was a foretold card, unfortunately. Alright. Still have a backup Florian, at least. And then I could play a second main adversary, which will get a counter, at least. To be mana efficient. And our opponent seems to have a one mana play, so it could be... Fading Hope, the Bound Spell. Or they're just in full control, who knows. Okay, we'll hit for 5, maybe playing Florian pre-combots. Yeah, this might be the Deluge turn for my opponent. So, a good turn to try and resolve a powerful threat, so if they do tap out for their card draw, I get to resolve Florian, if they counter it they don't get to Deluge and we get to hit for 5. And can still pay for Disruption. Alright, let's attack. It's gonna be Galvanic Iteration into a Burn Spell, or a Fading Hope that we suspected. Alright, that's a setback. But at least that takes care of one Galvanic Iteration. Opponent keeps on top. Sadly no land this turn, so we're a little bit stuck. Is it a Goldspan Dragon turn? Nope, it's gonna be Windfall, so they're playing kind of the combo version with Epiphany. Alright, I think try to jam Florian, attack, try and hit a land, play Alchemist. There's our land. And then I can maybe use Alchemists to put a counter on the Adversary. Now, reading Adversary... Even if it gets an extra counter from the Socialite, I think we only get one instant or sorcery from our Graveyard. Iteration for card draw. Now this version probably plays Burn Down the House as a sweeper, and that's exactly what they have. Well, our opponent's at 9, so this should be pretty straightforward. We've got three lethal burn spells that all need countering. And our opponent's still pretty far from comboing off with Elrond's Epiphany. As that will require a lot more mana. Alright, it's gonna be Iteration into... Maybe another Windfall? Nope, burn down the house, making a bunch of tokens. So, Inspiration to the face will do it. 
I'm gonna get to learn here. As our opponent is already dead. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, especially if I can find another untapped land on turn 2, since I want to play a pit fighter. And then Haunted Ridge comes into play tapped. Is it worth the risk, or do I just guarantee my 2-drop instead? I think it's worth the risk. Let's see what we're up against. Swamp into Itwitch. Already regretting my decision, although at least I get to play my Thermal Alchemist here. And then next turn I could activate Alchemist, play Socialite, which will put a counter on Pit Fighter so it can attack past Itwitch. And next turn we can do the same to put a counter on Hungry for more as well. So it hits a little bit harder. So opponent black green with a bit of a snow theme, so you can expect blood on the snow. And maybe some ramp cards. Get some necrotic fumes. Innkeeper. Okay. And is there a follow-up? Alright, so there are junt colors. And see, yeah, let's stick to the plan. Activate alchemists. And then I can even sacrifice the hungry for more token here to the pit fighter if I want to. Although that will require discarding a royal eruption. Alright, Infernal Grasp, so I guess we'll do it now. Draw two. I guess I could have let it resolve so the opponent lost two life, which I guess would have been nice too. But drawing two cards is pretty nice as well, so... We'll go with this line of play. They had to use their treasure. Field of Ruin, I don't care too much about. Ah, and a Necrotic Fumes for the turn is acceptable. Can play a Kicked Adversary, which can then replay that Royal Eruption, keeping Hungry for more in the graveyard. That's tempting, could also do something with Florion. And then Adversary will get two counters. Although it still only gets one spell back. And then hit for six. Opponent's at one. And uh, I didn't think they were gonna survive. Spider Queen, sure. And Thermo Alchemist can finish the job. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a mono red opening hand, but I kinda like it. Especially on the play, pit fighter into double pit fighter. Hopefully no early blockers or interaction. And we can secure ourselves a lot of damage early on. Can use Eruption and Inspiration as removal. Ooh, opponent foretold a card. So if that's a Doom Scar, we're gonna be a little sad. So I'm probably gonna hang on to Adversary and just Royal Eruption their face. Could also preemptively sacrifice a Pit Fighter to draw to, try and hit my land drops. It's a bit counterintuitive since we want to keep up the pressure, but Hitting my land drops is going to be important, and this is kind of my only chance to sacrifice a pit fighter. And then discard. Probably a hungry for more since I don't have black. And we can still flash it back. 
All right, hit my lane, that's good. And we still have four power in place, so if they have a Doomscar, they'll probably still fire it off. Uh, it's going to be a Revitalize of all things instead. And our opponent's also missing their land drop. Alright. Uh, don't think this is bait. So we'll hit for four. Could again sacrifice a Pit Fighter to hedge my bets and try and hit land number four. Could play Thermo Alchemists. An interesting spot for sure. Could also just Inspiration their face down to eight, grab environmental sciences, which can help hit my land drops. That's probably good enough. In case they top deck a land and then wrath the board. And then I've got more haste creatures and burn spells. Just a potion of healing for now. And no third land, let's have a look. It was indeed a Doomscar, so Glad I ended up sacrificing the Pit Fighter. I'm a bit unfortunate that our opponent wasn't able to play magic here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and not an ideal opening hand, but still probably a keep. Just don't get to play Pit Fighter turn one. Instead, turn two Alchemists. Alright, let's make sure to play then. And then Alchemist a great combo with Florian. Opponent Mono White with a Sun Gold Sentinel. Perfect target for play with fire. So do I take it out now? Could also just play Pit Fighter to block. That seems reasonable. And then next turn play Florian pre-combots to try and hit a land drop with the ability. Could see Luminarch Aspirin put a counter on Sentinel, then we'll have to Inspiration it. Alright, Maul of the Skyclaves instead. Alright, so they're gonna race. Now I could learn for start from scratch to destroy the Maul, although if I draw land I could also just double burn the Sentinel. Also the play might still be Florian to try and hit my land drops here. So... Yeah, let's play Florian. Alchemist can ping. Attack for two. And we get to dig pretty deep, finding a land. And we'll pass. No Coven, so they can't give it Hexproof. It's going to be an Adversary for now. That's fine. Let's see if they pay the two. So, probably a fine target for a play with fire. Take my five. And then I'm pretty likely to find an extra land with Florian. Although our opponent's pretty close to just being dead here too. They're at six, so an untapped land it would be lethal, but somehow it didn't find one. Uh, okay. Maybe I should have just played my burn spell before attacking to make it even more likely to find an untapped land. But I guess we'll keep things interesting. So, how do I lose here at 10 life? I don't think there's any way for my opponent to kill me in mono white. So I don't think it matters. I guess I can go for socialites. And then, I guess eruption their face. I guess I did have lethal if I just went for any instant or sorcery, I could have gotten the hungry for more. And I would have untapped double alchemist to kill my opponent right now. Oh well, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice hand. Pit fighter into adversary, inspiration to clear a path. And find a lesson. 
And let's see what we're up against. Turn one swamp into shambling ghasts. That is a pretty obnoxious blocker here. But I think I'm still attacking into it since I don't really have anything better to do. So they can trade for pit fighter, make a treasure, or trade for adversary. Alright. So they might have more ways to punish one toughness creatures. Like a hunt for specimens. Yep, that makes sense. Okay. So I don't think there's a point in trading or using inspiration on a pest to get in for two when they have a pest summoning in hand. So instead I'll just play Florian and pass and then next turn I can use inspiration to try and find more action. So a bit of an unfortunate start here. Opponent with the right answers. They're gonna pass. Potentially holding removal. Well, I'm still going to Inspiration their face here. And then they may kill Florian before I get to use the ability, but so be it. And then learn for probably a start from scratch to kill a pest. Could have also gotten the pump spell to put two counters on the pit fighter, which is also reasonable. So Florian attacks. Opponent waiting till the last seconds to pull the trigger on removal. Alright, and then uh, I guess we'll play Swamp and Pass. So it's not looking great here. Need some good top decks. There's a pest summoning and a vampire socialite. All right, that helps a little bit. So I could inspiration the opponent's face and learn for maybe mascot exhibition at this point. In case we draw more lands, and then socialite will pump up the pit fighter, so that at least trades for two tokens instead of one. So your opponent's still at 14 with a full grip. You could have will be a Play with fire. Could kill a spider. So... Can just start from scratch and kill Spider Queen, of course. Which is probably what I should do, and then... Probably no attack, hang on to play with fire. No, you'll fall into I guess socialite attacking would force him to lose two creatures, which is maybe still the best I can do here. Although I could save the play with fire to give a future vampire a plus one counter. Not sure how irrelevant that is, I think just trading for two creatures is probably the best I can do. Uh, if they block like this, I can actually save my socialites, kill the spider, and just eat the pest for free. Still pretty far behind. Opponent's gonna get in there with Hive of the Eye Tyrants. So not a race we're currently winning. Would be a good spot to top deck Hungary for more, as I can flash it back before they can exile it with Hive. Another Pit Fighter instead. Right, we'll attack first so it gets a counter. And I don't think I'm sacking Socialite here. Even though I'm very far from casting Mascot Exhibition, opponent could have a Sweeper in hand that they're just kind of waiting to fire off. So actually, 
not crazy to sacrifice socialite here. Could also sacrifice the pit fighter itself. Maybe that's better. All right, and there's my hungry for more, which I asked for. So that's potentially a lot of damage. Sadly, it doesn't come with a plus one counter since we need to be dealing damage pre-combat for that to work. All right, opponent sits back. And I'm just gonna cast and flashback. They don't have any blocks on Socialite or the 3-1 tokens, really. Socialite as Menace. Right, it's gonna be a flunk killing one of the tokens. And another flunk. Alright. It's too bad. So opponent's still at 10 after all is said and done. Another Spider Queen. Now what? I could send a single token at Spider Queen, which will kill it no matter what, but I think we're just going face. And just trying to win the race here. And then if they want a plus Spider Queen, that's gonna cost some life as well. And thanks to Trample, these blocks aren't amazing. Now, in response to the triggers, I could finish off Spider Queen, which could now cash in for two more spiders, I suppose. Because now, instead of losing life to draw cards, they can just apply more pressure, which might end up killing me before I find more burn. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. Well, their opponent's not really going to gain any life, so there's a lot of sequences that can burn them out. Nah, I'll let them keep the spiders. Do what I demand. And then finding a Igneous Inspiration can find start from scratch to burn them out. So that's probably going to be the play. Scry towards Igneous Inspiration. Another Hungry for more would do it. An opponent leaving the spider back out of fear for another hungry for more. So, yeah, this is pretty good spot, all things considered, for us. As the opponent is giving us time to top deck more burn spells. Alright, opponent is still losing life, so I guess they're not playing around hungry for more. I guess this still blocks the other 2-2 two -two haste. Then of the bugbear just gets destroyed by Field of Ruin, so... No point in keeping that one. And then I'll hang on to the land to represent more burn. So our opponent is at 3. We're at 16, so a lot of time to draw a Royal Eruption, Igneous Inspiration, another Hungry for more. Even our adversary getting back a burn spell would do it. Spider Queen's gone, and there's Inspiration for the win. Alright, so definitely showing the power of Hungry for more in these more controlling matchups where the opponent doesn't have a board presence, and it can just be a 12-point swing. Alright, so we got to see our Black Rat Vampire Burn deck in action, and yeah, overall I've been quite pleased with how it performed. And as I mentioned in the introduction, we're probably going to get more powerful vampires in the Crimson Vow expansion, which is already coming soon, so the deck can only get better. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.